பார்த்திபன் கனவு இங்கிலீஷ் டிரான்ஸ்லேஷன் பை ஆனந்த் கண்ணன் நரேட்டட் பை சுஜாதா ஆனந்த் புக் டூ சாப்டர் இலெவன் பொன்னன் சஸ்பிஷன் இட் வாஸ் அனாதர் டே ஆஃப் த சன் ஷைனிங் ஆன் த கரண்ட்ஸ் ஆஃப் ரிவர் காவேரி காசிங் அ கோல்டன் க்ளோ பொன்னன்ஸ் போட் வாஸ் கட்டிங் அக்ராஸ் அ ரிவர் ஸ்கேட்ரிங் வேவ்ஸ் அண்ட் ட்ராப்லெட்ஸ் தட் க்ளோட் லைக் ஜெம்ஸ் The boat was going towards the spring palace. The sage was on the boat too. Valli was standing on the shore and watching the boat go. The sage asked Ponnan, What really happened? How many people gathered to support the prince? Please don't remind me of that hour of shame, your holiness. If only the prince had not commanded me to go give a message to the queen, what would you have done? destroy the pallava army single handed asked the sage you are mocking me your holiness and i perhaps deserve it serves me right for staying alive after the disgrace do you know why i stay alive only because the queen commanded so only because the queen commanded think about it not out of concern for valli or not valli is not like you think your holiness She does not value life over honor. After all, she is the granddaughter of Veerabhadra Acharya. What can I say about the old man's courage and honor? How did the old man get mixed up in the skirmish, Purna? He did not come there to fight. He was standing by, watching from a distance. When he realized that the prince was all alone, he was distraught. We were expecting thousands of... even over 10000 men to join the prince in reality it was just me and five more peasants from the nearby villages the peasants were surprised by the pallava soldiers arriving from all directions they lost their nerve and dropped their weapons virabhadra acharya saw this uttered a war cry and got near the prince at the blink of an eye he picked up one of the swords that lay on the ground and shouted vetrivel veeravel victory to the king long live the king vikramachora and started brandishing the knife his war cry rang out a long way the pallava soldiers surrounded us what happened after that point was incredible i am not sure where the old man's strength came from from wielding the stretch hammer as a blacksmith i suppose he moved around rapidly wielding the sword when it was all done he had killed seven or eight pallava soldiers before he fell the pallava general was watching all this from a distance i heard he was stunned by the valor of the old man he ordered that the old man's body be cremated with full honors i am not surprised purna i am an ascetic and even i get goosebumps hearing of the old man's courage the country must be occupied at this point but no one can say a country that begot such a brave man is short of spirit i'm not confident that the choya country is going to regain its glory said the sage after a thoughtful silence he asked what happened after that the prince and i were stunned by the old man's actions when he fell we both ran towards him with cries of anguish The Pallava soldiers surrounded the prince. I lost my mind and started wielding my sword like a man possessed. I heard a command. Ponna, stop. I turned around and saw that the prince was bound by chains. The prince said, "There is no point in resuming this fight. I need you to do something for me. Go tell the queen what happened. Also, tell her that whatever happens, I have sworn not to do anything that would bring dishonor to my father's memory i was still furious at what had happened i said what sort of man would i be if i leave you like this i started brandishing my sword again someone hit me at the back of my head when i regained consciousness i was in prison said ponna did you go to prison as well how did you get out They freed all of us the next day. They said the emperor pardoned everyone except the prince. The Pallava emperor seems large-hearted, 
if your prince was not so stubborn, he may not have been deported either. Yes, the Pallava emperor is large-hearted. King Parthivan and Prince Vikraman are the bad ones, retorted Ponan sarcastically. After some thought, he added, I have never seen the Pallava emperor. I want to see him. Will he come to Uriur anytime soon? In fact, I heard he will come to Uriur soon, said the sage. Why the sudden devotion to the emperor, Ponna? You were regretting not dying a brave death defending your prince. Aren't you glad you stayed alive to learn enough about the emperor and develop a liking to him? Yes, I have a new sense of devotion to the emperor, but not just me. This fear is devoted to him as well. It is longing for an encounter with his chest, said Ponnan and pointed the spear at the sage. The sage had a bright smile on his face. Now you want to pretend I am the emperor? Ponnan dropped the spear. Your holiness, it may well be that the emperor is a noble man, a brave warrior and may even have divine qualities. But for me, he is an enemy. When I meet him, he gritted his teeth without finishing that sentence. The sage, apparently in an attempt to divert the conversation, asked, Ponna, did Mara Pabhupati not turn up on that day? Please don't mention that turncoat in my presence. He encouraged the prince on this mission and revealed all the plans to Achyutavarman. Why would that traitor appear on the scene of conflict? One thing, though, is how right Valli turned out to be. We all fell for his false promises. Valli had consistently been calling him untrustworthy. Beyond doubt, Valli is very smart. She is worthy of being married to a military general. Pardon me, Your Holiness? I said. She is worthy of being married to a military leader. Someone else has said this before, said Pona. Who is that? asked the sage. Marapa Bhupati. He said that when he was the general of the Choya army. Oh, is that so? Your Holiness, I have this strange thought sometimes. I will share it with you if you promise not to get angry. The sage said, I am an ascetic. I should strive for stillness of mind. I have sworn to avoid anger and passion. You can tell me. Sometimes I wonder if you are Marapan's agent. I have wondered if he has put you up to the act as a sage and stir up trouble. The sage laughed aloud and asked, What does Walli think? Have you asked for her opinion on your theory? She is devoted to you. She points out that I put my faith in that untrustworthy traitor and hence it is not surprising that I suspect a noble soul. After Marapan's betrayal, she has the upper hand in domestic conversations. She mocks everything I say. Like I said, Valdi is wise enough to be the wife of a general. But when I said so, I did not mean a general like Mara Pabhupati. You would be a worthy general as well, with your courage. Who knows, when Prince Vikraman ascends the throne of the Choya kingdom, I might become a general. Both are likely to happen, said the sage. The emperor has concluded that there is no space for our prince in this vast country of Bharat. Such a ruthless sentence. Sometimes, I think a death sentence might have been kinder. You are mistaken, Punna. As long as there is life, there is hope. As long as we are alive, there is a chance for dreams to materialize, even if the odds look bleak at the moment. Ask Queen Anarulmui. I'm sure she is relieved that her son is alive. Oh, look, is that the Queen? They were nearing the docks of the spring palace. They saw that the queen was waiting at the pier with a maid. The queen had her palms together as a gesture of respect for the sage. Ponan turned to the sage. Your Holiness, 
Please forgive me. What I said came out of ignorance. He said with true remorse. End of chapter 11